Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we are going to talk about reaching out to a different demographic that is hesitant or in some cases absolutely resistant. Uh, normally when we talk about it, we're really talking about the MAGA loyal, you know, the, the, the Trump supporters who just have bought into that particular information silo. They're not coming out of it. They don't want to come out of it. And that is where most of the effort gets expended. But somebody sent me a message asking about a very different demographic. Those people who are more spiritually inclined in a different way. Those people who are kind of hippie-ish in a way. Who are still vaccine hesitant or resistant. Okay. Um, and they sent a bunch of uh, arguments. They get used by this group of people and they're having trouble overcoming them. So we're going to go through them and see if we can't come up with some tactics to, to hopefully reach people. Okay, so the first one is that those who are hesitant, those are the real critical thinkers and those that are pro-vaccine aren't. This generally comes from an anti-establishment contrarian attitude, which, believe me, I get. I understand it. Um, the easiest way I have found to reach out to people like this is ask them to describe what they think is happening, but they can't collectivize. They can't use the word they. Well, what they want is for us to do this. They can't use they. They have to be specific about who the powers are, because in many cases, they're assigning a motive to, to somebody they can't even identify. So no big pharma, no anything like that. They have to be specific and they have to actually be able to say who's benefiting from this conspiracy that they lay out. Okay, And it, it forces them to address the fact that in many ways it's just a feeling they have because they have adopted a contrarian anti-establishment attitude that has shifted into the conspiratorial. So that's, that's a tactic I have found effective for this particular type of argument. Uh, let's see. Fact-checking is unreliable because their intuition is all they really need. That's easy. Point to their life. Point to the mistakes that they have made in their own life and ask why their intuition didn't protect them from it. Now, they'll probably say, well, I didn't listen to it. Are you really listening to it now? Um, this is one of those things where you, you start getting into, even though they would never admit that it's faith-based, that's what you're getting into now. So you're, you're not going to be able to break that down with logic. You're going to have to play within the bounds that they've created. So use that idea of intuition and show how it's not always accurate. Or perhaps maybe you're just misreading it. Maybe your intuition is telling you that you need to do this, but you're not ready for it for whatever reason. Your intuition is, in fact, telling you to get vaccinated. That's why you've spent so much time researching it and go that route. Um, all they need are vitamins. Yeah, that's just, that's not true. That isn't true. Send them to the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> they have a whole thing about it. Um, there are a lot of people who look to vitamins and supplements as a method of boosting their immune system. And it might but not enough to matter. That's really what comes across through May through Mayo. So I would just send them there. Uh, it doesn't matter what you decide now because the decision to make uh, the decision was made on whether or not to get the vaccine before you were even born. It's very fatalistic. They, these are people who believe in fate. Um, honestly, those people make me very nervous. Um, just from a different environment, those who believe in fate, those who believe that their actions are predetermined, those tend to be people who are capable of the greatest harm. Um, 
those who truly believe in fate and are using that as a crutch to engage in a socially irresponsible behavior or something that may put others at risk, honestly, if it was me, I, I would distance myself from them. Honest answer. Um, one of their, uh, I guess, thought leaders was banned on Facebook for spreading theories, and they're really upset about this. Um, I've used this to uh, actually get through to people. Get the specific posts that they had that led to them being banned. And go to those posts and find the actual misinformation and show them where it's wrong. Pull it out. This is what Facebook caught. This is why, why it's wrong. This is why they were banned. This is why you maybe shouldn't take this person at face value. And this is not just a good tool for getting through on that point. It erodes trust in whatever that, that figure is, whoever that person is that's putting out that information or that organization. Um, that's the, it, it, it's an inroad to actually getting through. So don't view that one as a bad one. Take advantage of it. Find the specific posts or find their past posts where you can point to and say, this was wrong and it's demonstrably wrong and here's the evidence. Um, because at its core, the reason they would be upset that somebody was banned for uh, spreading this kind of stuff is because they believe it to be true. Show that it's not. And the last one is that masks, well, they, they, they're useless. They don't actually protect you. And I've struggled with this because it's really hard to explain to people who are of this mindset that the mask isn't for you. Um, it, it's, it's to protect those around you. And then, uh, of, of all people, <laughs> my kid was like, oh, it's like covering your, your mouth when you sneeze or cough. Yeah, we know it works. We know it works to protect those around us. It's a custom. It's a tradition. We have done it for a very, very long time. This is just a method of making sure that it happens. Um, Relate it to that because I would imagine that uh, they probably do cover their mouth and nose when they sneeze or cough. And when you are talking about spiritual people like this, you can lean into the whole idea of, you know, you don't want to harm a bug. You don't eat meat because, you know, it hurts, you know, th this animal. You don't want to do these things because you want to have good karma or however, um, whatever that particular belief system is. Th they don't want to cause harm. Wearing a mask is just like sweeping the floor in front of you. It, it's, it's making sure that you don't cause harm unintentionally. Those, uh, hopefully those counter arguments can, can help get through uh, because this is a demographic of people that, that kind of gets left out because most people see them as those who, who would take these steps. Some of them have spiritual reasons that you'll never overcome. Um, they're, they're just there, and you're, you're not going to be able to get through. And there has to come a point where you're like, well, it, it's not going to happen. You, you can't continue to expend your effort. But before you reach that point of just throwing your hands up in the air and giving up, try these methods. Anyway, it's just a thought. You have a good day.